medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram video. Drinking boiled tap water reduces human intake of nanoplastics and microplastics. Dr. Roger Schwelt here from medcram.com. Back in September of 2023, we did a video on plastic particles in your food and body. And in that video, we described this particular article and others that showed that microplastics are just about everywhere across our ecosystems. Specifically in that video, we talked about heating things up in the microwave that were plastic and the effects of microplastics in drinking water. Particularly in this abstract here, it says that the potential for microplastic inhalation and how the source of drinking water may affect microplastic consumption were also explored. They said our analysis used 402 data points from 26 studies, which represents over 3,600 process samples. Evaluating approximately 15% of Americans' caloric intake, we estimated that the annual microplastics consumption ranges from 39,000 to 52,000 particles depending on age and sex. There's been connection to microplastics and also hormone disruption and things of that nature. We drew attention to this as a issue. And now, interestingly, we have a potential, at least partial solution for drinking water. We want to talk about a paper that was just published. But before we get to that, just wanted to remind you again of medcram.com, which is a medical education website where we educate not only physicians, nurses, PAs, respiratory therapists, EMTs, but also the general public on health and diseases explained clearly. If you need continuing medical education units or just curious, don't forget to visit us at medcram.com. Let's get to the topic. This paper was published on February 28th, 2024 in Environmental Letters, Science and Technology, which is a publication of the American Chemical Society. And the title of the article is Drinking Boiled Tap Water Reduces Human Intake of Nanoplastics and Microplastics. So the actual body of this article is behind a paywall, but we have enough information here from the abstract and also from some articles about this study to get in a little bit more depth about what's happening. And it's actually a very simple process that you probably learned about in high school chemistry. Let's take a look at the abstract. They say here that tap water nanomicroplastics escaping from centralized water treatment systems are of increasing global concern because they pose potential health risks to humans via water consumption. Drinking boiled water, an ancient tradition in some Asian countries, probably more than just Asian countries, is supposedly beneficial for human health as boiling can remove some chemicals and most biological substances. However, it remains unclear whether boiling is effective in removing nanomicroplastics in the tap water. Here we present evidence that polystyrene, polyethylene, and polypropylene nanomicroplastics can co-precipitate with calcium carbonate encrustants in tap water upon boiling. Boiling hard water greater than 120 milligrams per liter of calcium carbonate can remove at least 80% of polystyrene, polyethylene, and polypropylene nanomicroplastic sizes between 0.1 and 150 microns. That's actually a fairly large range. Elevated temperatures promote calcium carbonate nucleation of nanomicroplastics, resulting in the encapsulation and aggregation of nanomicroplastics within calcium carbonate encrustants. The simple boiling water strategy can, quote, decontaminate, unquote, nanomicroplastics from household tap water and has the potential for harmlessly alleviating human intake of nanomicroplastics through water consumption. So let me show you here what the pictorial abstract looks like. So this is the NMP polluted tap water. And in the water, they have it represented as these plastics that are floating around. And by boiling the water, what's happening here is something that would go against common sense. Typically, as you heat up water, things tend to dissolve better. Well, that's actually the opposite effect of what happens with calcium carbonate and a number of other minerals, including magnesium minerals as well. Actually, as the temperature goes up and hits 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water, of course, at sea level, Notice what happens to the solubility. That means the ability of calcium carbonate and other ions to remain soluble in water. It actually goes down. Of course, if you're at altitude, there is a boiling point depression, but you can see here that it's not that big of a deal. You're not getting that much of a decrease in that ability to precipitate. In other words, as you heat up the water, these ions tend to precipitate more. This is the reason why you get calcium and magnesium buildup, by the way, in hot water tanks. 
So as these things happen, they tend to drift downwards towards the bottom. And as they are precipitating, they trap the microplastics inside of their incrustations, their precipitations. And so you can simply decant off the water at the top or filter it. And that's one way of filtering out these previously unfilterable microplastics. And then, of course, drink, and you have potentially reduced human intake of these microplastics. There was a nice article in the Washington Post that was also republished on Yahoo, and I have the link in the description below this video that you can actually read the entire article. Maggie Penman, who's the author of this Washington Post article that was just published on February 28th, specifically asked, is this something that could be done at home? And they say here, if you want to try it, the researchers cautioned that you should wait five to 10 minutes to let the solids settle, as we sort of talked about, and let the water cool, of course, and then you can filter out the solids. Reddy, who is one of the authors of the study, said he doesn't think people need to start boiling all of their drinking water, especially since this might be less effective with softer water. So the key here is that you actually need minerals in the water to be able to precipitate. But part of what he found hopeful about this was how obtainable solutions can be to reduce the number of microplastics in drinking water. So I thought this article was pretty cool for a number of reasons. Number one, it's a very simple solution that just about anybody can do to reduce the number of microplastics in their water. It depends on your water source, how many microplastics might be in it. You might want to talk to somebody who's an expert or can actually test your water to see how many microplastics there are in there. The other reason why I found this really interesting is because it uses something that we all learned about in high school chemistry as a potential solution for something that is pretty serious in nature in terms of our health. It can't reduce all of the microplastics. It says they're at least 80%, but I think it's a good start and an interesting article. And if you want to look up those articles, look at the description below. And again, don't forget to join us at medcram.com. Thanks for joining us.